So before we move on, we need to uh, just briefly uh, mention the convention that we use to talk about stresses within soils. Um, in the previous video, I was mainly talking about vertical stresses, but soils are three-dimensional materials, so we need a, a system for talking about uh, stresses and, and forces within soils within three dimension. Um, and you'll see this sort of uh, uh, diagram introduced in a lot of the textbooks. And really what that's saying is that um, we can resolve all of our stresses um, into uh, acting on three planes. So stresses acting on the, uh, on the y, y plane, stresses acting on the x, x plane, and stresses acting on the Z, Z plane. Um, the, the reason why we use subscript YY is that it's um, in the Y direction acting on the Y plane. So this is the, the Y plane up here, and it's acting in the Y direction. Similarly, this is the X plane, and the, the stress is acting in the X direction, similarly with the Z uh, stress. So we can resolve all of our stresses in soils into these three planes. Um, Uh, we also represent shear stresses within within this uh, diagram, and I'll come back to what shear stresses are in a, in a later video. But um, we represent them by arrows on the on the surface of these uh, on the surface of these these planes, and it's often half arrows that they're represented as. Um, and the, the convention for those is that we have tau, which is the shear stress, um, acting on the, um, in the, on the y pla plane in the x direction. And this is tau acting on the y plane in the z direction. Tau acting on the x plane in the y direction. Tau acting on the x-plane in the z-direction and tau acting on the z-plane in the x-direction and then tau acting on the z-plane in the y-direction. So we can describe the normal stresses and the shear stresses within this diagram. So one thing that to point out is that um, in soil mechanics, unlike a lot of other engineering disciplines, the compressive forces and compressive stresses uh, here are uh, positive. So in most other engineering disciplines, it's the other way around, where the tensile forces are positive and the compressive forces are negative. But as soil mechanics, where we generally consider, uh, in soil mechanics, most of our stresses and forces are compressive, it's a little bit easier to, to use this convention. So you'll see that difference if you uh, start looking in other engineering textbooks. We talked about the self-weight of soil creating a vertical force. Um, that can also create a, uh, a horizontal or a lateral force. Um, and um, if we have a, a soil profile similar to one we've previously had, um, I've shown you how to calculate the stress acting let's say, on an element of that soil in the vertical direction. So, uh, sorry, why, why? But what about the stress acting in the, in the horizontal direction? Um, well, just considering the self-weight of the soil, uh, we can calculate uh, this horizontal um, stress um, using concepts of lateral earth pressure. Um, and there's a bunch of theories. Um, there's a Rank Rankine's theory. And there's also the Coulomb theory. Uh, theory. And I'm not going to go through those in too much detail, but really what they're, they're doing is taking a proportion of the um, of the vertical stress, um, multiplying it by a constant, and um, and that gives you your your horizontal str uh, stress. So, in most of these theories, the horizontal stress is equal to um, 
a constant multiplied by the vertical stress. Um, so this constant of, of lateral earth pressure. Um, and it can be active, passive, or at rest. And um, when we uh, talk about embankments or, uh, uh, or cuttings or, um, or retaining walls, this is an important. But um, let's, uh, so when we talk about uh, cuttings and retaining walls and, and foundations and embankments, this can either be active, passive, or at rest. Um, but let's just uh, consider the uh, at rest value. Um, this is uh, proportional to the um, So in the previous uh, video, I talked about the vertical stresses and how you calculate the vertical stresses in soil. So if we have a soil profile and we have a little element of soil within that, I showed you how to calculate the vertical stress. But what about the horizontal stress? How do we determine that? Um, well, if we're just considering the self-weight of the soil and there's no structure on it, we can use a concept of lateral earth pressure to derive this, this horizontal stress. Um, and there's a few theories. There's a Rank Rankine's theory and the Coulomb's theory. And there's a bunch of other theories. Um, but they, essentially what they do is they take the vertical stress um, and relate it to the horizontal stress by multiplying it by a uh, um, coefficient of, of lateral earth pressure, um, k0. And that can be, depending on, what the, uh, depending on what your application is, that can be at, at rest, um, which would be the case here, um, or active or passive. So from, we're starting to think about embankments or foundations or retaining walls. Um, it's important to know uh, that there's a, a range of different K values you can put into that, active, passive, or at rest. Um, but just considering the at rest value for now, um, the, um, the K naught is a function of the angle of friction of the soil. And we'll, we'll talk about what the angle of friction is in uh, some later videos, but it essentially it pops out at around somewhere between 0 0.7 and 0 0.2. So you can see that the, depending on how your, your soil distributes the, the vertical stress, you can see that it could be 70% or 20% of the, the horizontal stress could be 70% or 20% of that vertical stress. So it's an important thing to consider, and that's one of the ways we get um, uh, we can start thinking about soils in three dimensions. So what about the z-axis, the, the axis of uh, a force coming in and out of the board here? Um, what are the stresses acting on that plane? Well, a lot of uh, problems in soil mechanics can be simplified into two dimensions, um, especially in problems that are, uh, or, struct uh, or geotechnical structures that are longer um, than they are deeper or wider, so things like uh, railway embankments. Um, and in such cases, we assume a case of plane strain where the, the, the stress is going into um, the long direction, so in the Z direction, are equal to the stresses coming in the other direction. So it's e in some cases, it's uh, safe to um, ignore that. And that's what we call plane strain. 